Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, I kind of forgot to put it in the bulletin, but today is a very special day. It's called, uh, what in the heck is it called? Holy Trinity Sunday. And I asked the kids in Alexander, I said, what does Trinity mean? And of course, they didn't know. So I said, well, how many wheels does a tricycle have? It's three, right? Three, three wheels. So Trinity means three. Today is that day in the church year where we remember that God is three in one and one in three. And that's kind of sounds like gibberish. I remember when I was uh, out on internship, I had not yet finished seminary, but I thought I knew everything. And so uh, on internship, the young intern has is with the confirmation class. So I told the confirmation class, go ahead and ask me anything. I know, I know a lot. You know, of course, young, dumb. And so I said, let's play stump the pastor. So they thought about it for a minute, and this one young lady said, you know, what's this whole Trinity thing about? I don't understand one and three and three and one. And I went, oh, I shouldn't have even asked the question. So I don't ask that question anymore. What I did was I tried to talk to her about how three and one, one and three, what that is is we celebrate t- today that God is three and one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And those three are one in essence. It's hard to explain. Martin Luther talked about uh, water. Water can be in a liquid form, a solid form, or a gaseous form. And so all three are water, and all three are the same, and yet they're different. And that's how we know God, the Father, the Creator, God the Son, the one who gave himself for us, and God the Holy Spirit, who is with us this day and every day as we live out our lives in Christian faith. So today is Holy Sunday. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about what you see on television. Any of you watch television? Does it drive you nuts? Oh my gosh. I mean, it's just getting insane. I don't know, you know, I suppose 50, 100 years ago, Uh, people probably thought the same. Oh my gosh, the world's going to heck. Any of you think that? The world's just going to heck? It seems like it's worse today than it was back when I was younger. It seems like every day there's some sort of a new scandal. Politicians are lining their pockets. Do you believe that? Am Am I lying or am I telling the truth? My gosh, I'm telling the truth. Politicians are lining their pockets. It's everybody's out for themselves. There are new scandals. Uh, just last week, there was a man, a young soldier, killed in London by Islamic terrorist. And my gosh, how much worse can it get? Well, many of us in this country have chosen, you know, you look at the news and they, you kind of just throw up your hands and you go, you know what, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with it. Forget it. I'm going to go into my little bubble, and I'm only going to worry about myself because that's really the only thing I can control is myself. All this other nonsense that's going on in the world, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. That is not good. They were doing a poll. (coughs) They were doing a poll, and... uh, they were asking people on the street, have you ever seen those where they, they go out on the street and they say, well, here's, here's five pictures, and one of them's of Joe Biden. And they'll say, which one of these is the vice president of the United States? And they have no clue. And they'll say, who is the vice president of the United States? And they have no clue. What they have done, what many people in this country are doing, is they're saying, you know what, it is so nuts out there that I don't care what's going on, I don't want to know what's going on, I'm going to retreat, and I'm going to go in and only worry about myself. That is not good. That is not scriptural. It is not what God calls us to do. The other thing that some people might do, and very few try this, but they try and go out and fix the problem. 
Now that is a, probably a good and noble idea. I'm going to go out and save the world. However, if you try and do that yourself, you will fail. You will become discouraged. So that also is not going to work. But there is a third option. In our psalm today, the psalmist says that the world is beautiful. And it is a beautiful world. I speak the truth when I tell you that the birds were chirping this morning and the trucks were humming. It was a gorgeous morning. Beautiful. And yet the world is broken. And so what do we do as Christians? It's not easy to be Christian in today's world because there is persecution. There are people that are deliberately trying to destroy all Christian morals. And that is very, very discouraging. That's probably what bothers me the most. Not the scandals, not the terrible things that are happening in the world, but the idea that the world seems to be actively fighting and trying to destroy morals. What we have done, ladies and gentlemen, is that the world is trying to live in a way that says, I can do anything that I want to do. Listen to this and see if it's true. I can do anything in the world as long as it does not hurt anyone else. Does that sound familiar? That's what people are doing for morals. It does not matter what Scripture says. It does not matter what God says. It does not matter what the law says. I can do anything I want as long as I'm not hurting those around us. That is the mindset today. What we have done is we have gotten rid of all outside authority. There is nobody, there is no God that can tell me what I can and can't do as long as I don't hurt someone else. What people fail to realize is that they're hurting themselves because we have discarded all outside authority. In the psalm that we read today, King David writes that God's name is majestic. Today we remember that God is triune, that there is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's name is majestic. God is also outside of us. God is the one who has the moral right to expect us as Christians to listen to his word. The psalmist says, Out of the mouths of babies and infants, God has established his strength to still the enemy and the avenger. God's word comes to us. We need to listen to God's word as a child listens to a parent. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, God has established strength. If you look at the children around us, they put their trust in their parents explicitly. They don't necessarily question, but they listen. We need to listen to God as well. The humble faith of a child is what we need to try and do. The littlest children among us, they haven't been through the ringer. They've not been discouraged by this world. They look at the world with wonder in their eyes. That's what we need to do as well. The psalmist says, I look, at, I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers. What is man that you are mindful of him? Here the psalmist puts everything into perspective. We have lost the idea that God is all-powerful, that God works in this world to this day. We just don't sometimes get it. Sometimes we shake our fists at God and say, you know what, if you're so powerful, God, why don't you come and fix this mess that's in the world? We shake our fists at God and ask, don't you know who I am? Don't you know how much I have done for you? We cannot speak to God like that. What the psalmist says is that with God being majestic and powerful and almighty, we need to remember our place, that God is our Lord 
and that we are his subjects. And yet, the psalmist says, even though we are sinful and broken, even though we are unclean and deserve nothing in the eyes of God, yet God has put us just a little lower than the angels. God acknowledges us as his children. And that's an amazing thing. So what do we do when we look at this world and become discouraged? Do we throw up our hands and say, forget it, I can't deal with it? Or do we try and fix the problems ourselves? No, I recommend that you look at this third way. Even though the world is beautiful, even though the world is corrupt, always do everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't try to fix everything all at once, by yourself. There are many good Christian organizations that have found a, a small need and they are working on helping. Everything that we do needs to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ asks us to remain steadfast. Christ asks us to remain in the faith given to us by our ancestors when it seems like all heck is breaking loose in the world, remember that Christ has defeated this world. That's part of being a Christian. It means to live in this world, but not to be a part of the world. Live in the world, but don't be a part of it. Know what's going on in the world. Care about those around us. Whoever God places in your path, care for them. Jesus himself says that life isn't going to be all rosy. In fact, this world killed Jesus Christ because he was righteous, because he was the Son of God. This world is tough. Life is not easy. But Christ says, pick up my cross, pick up your cross, and carry it in faith. Remember that Christ has defeated this world. Remember that Christ gave his life so that we could live in this world and make a small difference. Call upon the name of Christ always. Don't try to retreat into your own little world. Don't try to fix huge problems by yourself. Do everything in prayer. Do everything for the glory of God. Do everything asking for the Holy Spirit's help. And always and above all, remember that Christ is for you. Salvation is yours. It's been given to you in your baptism. It is given to you in your daily walk with Christ. And so salvation is yours. It is free. It is unmerited. It is given to you because Christ loves you. And so depart. Leave this place in peace, knowing that your justification is sure, that you're standing before God, is righteous. Amen.